Hey guys, my name is Victoria. And I'm Mama. And we are part of the Creative 2 team. And you can check us out at www.creative2.us. And today we're going to talk about why your nonprofit brand identity is important and how to get it working for you. All right, so we're going to keep this as short as possible because we don't want to take your precious time. We you know what it's like being in a nonprofit. So let's get to it. Um, we're going to go into what is a brand identity. I think as a nonprofit, um, you know, you hear this thrown around a lot in, um, in marketing or in branding, and um, really, we're going to keep it simple. It's anything that visually represents your nonprofit. So that could be your logo, mm -hmm. your marketing collateral. Um, uh, it could be when you walk into your nonprofit, like the colors that are on the walls. It could be a website. Your website. I think a website is actually one of the biggest um, forms of identity. Um, in, in my opinion, I yeah. mean, there's, there's everyone has their own approach to it but so that's what brand identity is and today we're going to focus mainly on the logo yes we're going to focus on logos guys um, which is actually just one um, factor in your brand identity so let's go into why it's important and I'm, and this isn't in any specific order these are just things we compiled really quickly but um, I'm, I'm going to just go through it um, one it defines who you are and what you stand for um, it will target the right donors and get them supporting you, which is important. Three, it has a strong psychological effect and creates an overall experience. And four, it's the overall perception of your nonprofit. So it's what people think about you. All right, so I'm going to let Alma take this over because she's actually our logo designer when it comes to branding. So Alma, what makes a good logo? So there's quite a bit of aspects that make a good logo, but um, these are the ones that we thought were the most important. So with the logo, maybe a lot of people don't really think about it, but a logo must be used more than in just one area. So it's not no longer just used on your business card, right? Um, so it's on social media, on your website. Right. So not only should a logo work um, in a larger scale, but really think about it um, working really small. So imagine it on your business card. Um, it's probably going to be like half an inch small or even smaller. Who knows? Right. It has to be legible. You have to be able to tell what it is when it's on that business card or on your social media as well. It right. has to be able to work. Um, so it has to be able to work in like a square format. Um, and yeah, it, for example, social media, yes, like for Facebook, like social media. Um, pictures, um, your little avatar. Instagram, Twitter, right? They're all squared. So yeah. your logo has to fit in there and it has to look good at, in that tiny uh, size, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's pretty tiny if you think about it. It's not very big. Yeah. And it has to also work horizontally for like websites. Horizontal. You know? Yeah, I don't think a lot of people think about that. When, when it comes down to your website, uh, what works best is, you know, horizontal. Yes. Okay, right. so moving on. It has to work in black and white. I always tell, um, I always say that you should always work from black and white and then move on to color because um, if you were to start off in color, um, and then go back to black and white, you might have a lot of contrast issues and you might not even be able to tell what that logo is when it's turned into black and white. So if you start off black and white, you're in the good, you know? You'll be able to tell um, what it is. It'll be in the most right. simplest form that it can possibly be, right? And, and actually, I've seen some logos too where um, if you try to put like a color overlay on it, you know, um, for example, it just turns into a silhouette and a big yes. blotch. So you have to make sure that it works in black and white and color. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, moving on. Okay, so um, like I touched on before, it has to work across different mediums. So not yes. just print, so digital, you know, website, social media. And there's different formats for that, guys. When it goes yes. from print to digital, there's different formats so that the colors stay the same. They don't change too drastically. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so moving on, it has to be timeless. Overall, it has to be timeless. So, um, you know, you might be tempted to use, um, like, aspects that are trending, you know, um, mm -hmm. currently. But think about it. If you choose something that's trending, it's just you're going to end up looking like everybody else. There's no differentiation, guys. Yes. You're not unique, and you won't di differentiate yourself from your competitors or from other nonprofits. Yeah. And a few years from now, you know, that trend, the trends are going to change, and you're going to have to get a new logo. And right, you wants that, which right? you're going to have to get a redesign and you're going to have to spend more money. So make sure that your logo is timeless, guys. Moving on. So <laughs> your logo, most importantly, it has to be able to tell your story. It has to have meaning. 
<laughs> you're going to touch no, that. Okay, so yeah, your logo must tell your story and it must have meaning, guys. So if your logo does not tell you, when I look at your logo, if it doesn't tell me your story and it doesn't have a meaning, okay, I will be able to tell that. All right, guys, so make sure that your logo tells your story. It speaks who you are and what you do. Move it on. All right, so we're going to give you examples of three strong nonprofit logos, and they're actually our top three favorite nonprofits, um, but um, we love all of you, so let's move on. Um, the first one is Invisible Children. Alma, what makes this logo amazing? Um, it's in black and white, first of all. It has yeah. pretty um, a pretty classic font right there. It's, it's bold. Yeah. It's very bold. Which I think it's it's great because this organization um, is really you know fighting against the LRA right so um, and helping these children um, so I think having a very bold font really fits that um, and I want to I want to touch on um, they're not using any imagery in this font at all and I nope. think it's because their actual nonprofit name Invisible Children it's that's very, very powerful right there in itself. Yeah. And it makes you think, you're like, why are these children invisible? What does that mean? You know? Right, right. And, and it gets you going. And I think that um, it makes the invisible visible, right? That's kind of, to me, what it stands for. I think it's, it's taking these children's stories that weren't being, uh, you know, they weren't being talked about in the media. Mm -hmm. and, and Invisible Children Nonprofit really brought that out and it became a... Um, they brought awareness to the to the situation. So um, here is a snippet on their website um, that I took, and I think that um, I want you to compare this snippet, um, which is part of their story, to the logo. So we mobile uh, we mobilized unprecedented international awareness and action to help end the LRA crisis. It contributed to a 93% reduction in killings by the LRA. And we have helped thousands of Central African families become safer through innovative community-based pro uh, protection initiatives. And in the process, our global team has gained unparalleled experience, developed real and expertise, and cultivated a massive network of trusting relationships with resilient local change makers across Central Africa. So does this logo speak that? I think so. Do you agree, Alma? Yeah. All right, we're gonna move on. Um, so this is actually dear to my heart. This is um, a, a nonprofit that uh, is specifically to prevent suicide. So it's called To Write Love on Her Arms, and they've been around since um, emo days. Okay, um, I used to be in bands, and um, I was always gaga over To Write Love on Her Arms because they, it really spoke to me as well. So um, just looking at it, it's again, it's just typography, and again, it's yeah. just in black and red. And white. I think the typography really speaks to that. Um, that audience. That audience, yeah. It really looks like a band's logo, you know? Yeah. So, um, To Write Love on Her Arms is very, it's very um, linked to music. It's very um, interlaced with it. Um, so, um, let's just go into, let's compare it to their story. Let's compare the logo to the story. So, it started with a story. Our founder, Jamie, didn't set out to start a nonprofit organization. All he wanted to do was help a friend and tell her story. When Jamie met Renee, she was struggling with addiction, depression, self-injury, and suicidal thoughts. He wrote about the five days he spent with her before she entered a treatment center, and he sold t-shirts to help cover the cost, which is actually, guys, just comment what bands do. And when she entered treatment, he posted the story on MySpace to give it a home. And again, this was a while back, guys, MySpace. And the name of the story was To Write Love on Her Arms. And I think this is another one that has a very strong name to it. Yeah. Not just the logo, guys. Think about your name when you're... You're going to call your nonprofit something, think about the name, okay? He used the story and converted it into a logo and into the nonprofit's name. And again, it, they, he wasn't going for that, but it just happened, and it, I think it translated very well to write love on her arms. And again, the typography is great. I think it speaks to, um, you know, younger teenagers, yeah. young adults who are struggling with addiction, depression, self-injury, and suicidal thoughts, and they help with that, and that's a great nonprofit. Moving on. So... Um, third one, the last one is WWF, the World, World Wildlife, Wildlife Fund. Go ahead. So right here, it's a very classic logo, um, black and white again. Um, and I actually want to mention the WWF on there. Um, they used initials instead of using that whole World Wildlife Fund. You know, like I think a lot of um, problems that a lot of uh, nonprofits have is that they try to use their whole name in a logo. Right. And it's just it just causes a lot of complications, you know. 
Yeah, when it's when it's very long, um, you just kind of think about the mediums that you're going to be on. You know, yeah. you're going to be on stationery, you're going to be on on postcards, you're going to be on you know email newsletters, you're going to be on you know any type of digital print format. When it when your name is very very long, you're going to struggle with having to fit in and squeeze like squeeze it in there. And you kind of want to like reduce that if your name is really really long. And if you want to keep it, you know, you can always change the name, but most of the time you want to keep it. You can do you know initials like what World Wide uh, Life. And so I want to touch on the actual use, the amazing use of negative space in this logo. Um, as you can see, you can see that it's a panda. They didn't have to close up all those lines, like around the head and the back. You don't need to close up those lines to be able to yeah. tell it's a panda. You don't have to put eyes in there. They kept it the simplest that they could. I was going to so say that. So that you could see yeah, it's was, a panda, yeah. I was going to comment on that, that it's very simple. You yeah. know, it's not, you know, I think when people want to, you know, some type of animal or some type of, uh, I can't find the word for it right now, but, you know, when you want something like that, you want, you know, you want it very detailed. Yeah. But nowadays, to make it timeless, to make it memorable, you want to keep it simple. Yeah. Okay? And this is a perfect example of that. So let's go into, again, um, this one's not really the story, but we kind of found a page where they talk about the logo. Okay, yeah. so the actual organization goes into the logo, which I thought was freaking great. And so here's a snippet. We wanted an animal that is beautiful, is endangered, and one loved by many people in the world for its appealing qualities. We also wanted an animal that had an impact in black and white to save money on printing costs. Sarah Peter Scott, so that was a uh, founder of uh, WWF, and mm -hmm. I think he, I think this started like in the 60s, this organization. Mm -hmm. So anyways, um, so looking at the panda, um, when that's one of the things we talked about yeah. was that um, it had appealing quality. So if, if this panda was seen anywhere around you know the world, people can tell that it's a panda and people love pandas no matter yeah, what, part, love pandas. what part of the you know country you're in. So um, they picked the panda because of that. Um, they also made it in black and white to save money on printing costs. And that's something that a lot of nonprofits don't think about. Okay, guys, think about um, you know how you're going to use the logo, okay, going back. How are you going to use this logo? They thought about, you know, how to save money on printing costs. So um, we're go we'll go ahead and give you um, links um, to all of these um, stories, and um, especially this one, you know, so you can see a little more about the logo by um, WWF. Mm -hmm. And we hope that you found this useful. Um, we try to make it as short as possible. I'm seeing that we went into 12 minutes, but. Um, you know, we'll keep uh, giving you this kind of material. And again, we hope you enjoyed it and that you find it useful and that you uh, use it with your brand identity. And we'll see you next time.